On my channel, I've been very upfront about the fact that sexual content in video games does not bother me. As long as the game itself is good, I don't really care. And on my channel, I've discussed games with every level of sexuality, from Celeste, which is appropriate for all ages, to games like Evan Eagle, which has gratuitous hentai scenes. Well, I've been doing some thinking recently, and I realized that my thoughts go a bit deeper than just, it doesn't matter one way or another. And I'd like to talk about it. So for those of you who've watched my last few videos, you'll know that I've been on a bit of a visual novel kick lately. Well, here's the thing, it's not uncommon for visual novels to have graphic sex scenes. I think a big part of this is because the vast majority of visual novels are Japanese, and outside of Japan, the visual novel fanbase is largely a subset of anime culture. And in Japan, sexuality is a lot more open within society than in the West, especially here in America. So naturally, media that is created in or inspired by Japan is going to be more upfront with sex, at least on average. Hell, most of the visual novels I've read have had at least one sex scene, and in many cases I feel the stories are better because of it, while other people would say that it ruins it for them. I haven't always been so accepting of sex in my games. In fact, there was a time when I actively looked down on it, when I thought that it made the final product worse in all circumstances. But here's the thing, I was not thinking logically. Having grown up in America, anything sexual was always considered taboo. I was basically raised to believe that sex was dirty and being open about sexuality was wrong. And it's not like this is something I was taught by my family. Rather, American society in general is pretty prudish, and I think that impressed on me. But here's the thing, as a 23 year old guy, I like sex. I know, shocking right? Hot takes only on this channel. But think about it, the overwhelming majority of people above the age of 13 do in fact like sex, but it's weird to talk about it or even to acknowledge it. I believe that's due to how our culture is, and I think that mentality did stunt my appreciation of what art, and in particular what stories, are capable of. Eventually I started to realize that the media I consumed could be good even when it was pretty sexual. I'm a big fan of A Song of Ice and Fire, which is the book series that Game of Thrones is based off of. And there's a whole lot of sex in those books, just like in the show, but they're still phenomenal. As I continued to read, watch, and play things that had sexual content, I became more and more tolerant of it, even if I wasn't quite accepting of it yet. And then I started reading visual novels. My first proper visual novel was Katawa Shoujo, a wonderful slice-of-life passion project made by a bunch of anons on 4chan of all places. And here's the thing. Katawa Shoujo is a visual novel about romance. I shouldn't have to tell you that when two people get involved in a serious relationship, chances are there's going to be a sexual component. Katawa Shoujo has one to three sex scenes per route, so a definitive non-focus. They were also done quite tastefully. Where some adult scenes in games and visual novels are designed to be stimulating for the audience, that wasn't the impression I got from the sex in Katawa Shoujo. In fact, while all the ladies in the visual novel are definitely attractive, the sex scenes weren't the type that I'd ever want to go back to if I was only looking for that type of entertainment. When I read Katawa Shoujo, I was a little bit shocked. This is one of the few times I had encountered a case of explicit sexual content being used exclusively for the benefit of the story. This was sex where they showed everything, nothing was implied or left to the imagination, but it was still done with artistic purpose, which is something that I think I subconsciously thought didn't exist. While I can't pinpoint the exact moment I first realized that sex could be used as an artistic tool, I think reading Katawa Shoujo played a big role, especially since the project as a whole had a huge impact on me. And even though Katawa Shoujo was made mostly by Westerners, they are a bunch of weebs, and it was heavily inspired by Japanese media. This exposure to another culture that is much more open about sex, or at least a representation of this culture, opened my eyes, and over time I realized just how much my own worldview was shaped by the culture I grew up in. It's hard not to look back on my old mindset with disappointment. After all, I have always loved stories and storytelling. Some of my happiest moments are when I'm enthralled in someone else's world, where I'm experiencing a truly great story. This passion for stories is actually a large part of the reason I love making YouTube videos. When a story touches me or makes me think, I just get so excited and I have this intense desire to talk about it, to air my thoughts and opinions, to share my passion with others in the hopes that they will be as inspired as me. And it pisses me off that I spent so long rejecting such an important piece of the puzzle. In hindsight, it should have been obvious. Of course sex is important to the human condition, especially in relationships. Hell, my own experiences with dating should have made me well aware of that. But you know, if everyone tells you that the sky is green, day after day, sooner or later you start to believe it. Everywhere I looked, there was the implicit assumption that when it comes to games, books, and film, that explicit sexuality is bad. Even when there was sex in the media I consumed, films would pan the camera away and fade to black. Books would use deliberately vague and undetailed language. Games would only usually imply sex, and in the rare circumstances where it was clear that sex happened, it would happen off-screen. And I never questioned the idea that this was just how it should be. 
To me, any kind of detailed depiction of sex was dirty, was wrong, and it took me experiencing the media of other cultures where this notion is rejected entirely for me to overcome it myself. Honestly, I feel like I spent a large portion of my life with a filter over my eyes, and even though at times I regret how long it took me to come to terms with sexuality, I can now appreciate and understand the stories I love so much more than I used to. I've always loved stories, but I feel like I'm on a deeper level with it now. Yeah, but of course, this video would be deliberately incomplete and, quite frankly, dishonest if I only made the pure art argument. After all, I've praised some rather raunchy games on this channel. Two that come to mind are Honey Pop and Evan Eagle. These two games utilize sex much differently than many of the visual novels that I've read. They use sex because it's sex and people like sex. Honey Pop straight up uses sex as a reward structure. You progress with the game and you get porn. Evan Eagle does use sex as a part of its narrative structure since it is a semi-parody where the hypersexual nature of the game is played up for laughs. However, it's also unapologetically designed to be, well, exciting. You're meant to enjoy the sex scenes at face value. Now, I think that the artistic argument I made earlier is something that a lot of people are going to be able to be convinced of. It doesn't take all that much persuasion to get someone to accept that all parts of the human experience can be used to craft art. Getting those same people to accept sexual content along the lines of Evan Eagle, which let's be perfectly honest here, is straight up hentai, is a bit of a tougher challenge. After all, the refined justifications I would use for Katawa Shoujo simply don't apply here. When Alice Soft developed Evan Eagle, they didn't add these extremely graphic sex scenes in order to elevate the artistic value of the final product. They did it for exactly the reasons you think. So you may be wondering how in the world I could defend this type of sexual content aside from the simple reality that I am a 23-year-old guy with the libido of a 23-year-old guy. And to be clear, I'm not arguing that this type of content should necessarily be commonplace, and I'm certainly not saying that every piece of media should adopt it. Far from it. There are many, many games, books, movies, etc. that absolutely should not have extreme sexual content. However, I do think it has a place, and I don't think it should have to be an underground thing that people are ashamed to admit they enjoy. Let me put it this way. Here are some of the video games that I've played and enjoyed immensely. Doom 2016, Hotline Miami 1 and 2, Dead by Daylight, Killing Floor 2, Mortal Kombat. What do all these games have in common? They are all violent, gory kill fests. If someone were to tell you that they enjoy any or all of these games, you probably wouldn't even bat an eye. Sure, you might not want to let a young child play them, but there's nothing wrong or socially unacceptable about not only liking them, but talking about how much you like them. But if you were to say how much you may like games that have content like this, people are going to look at you funny. Why is that? What is it about gratuitous sex that's so much worse than gratuitous violence? I asked myself that very same question. After all, even after I accepted that sex was the legitimate artistic tool, I wasn't exactly comfortable with the more outrageous stuff. I thought long and hard about it, and I just couldn't come up with a single objective reason to explain why a bloodbath is okay while a sex scene is not. Is there really a significant difference between dismembering a virtual demon and railing a sexy anime lady? <laughs> now there's a sentence I never thought I'd say. I think it all goes back to the culture I grew up in. Here in America, we can be a bit repressed. People here can get really weird about anything even remotely sexual, even in a non-sexual context. Things like breastfeeding, physical displays of platonic affection, and even scratching an itch on your balls are looked at with a degree of revulsion when done in public, even if done discreetly. Is there anything objectively wrong or immoral about any of these activities? I'd say there isn't. It's just that the society I grew up in, and yes, we live in a society, is very uncomfortable with anything that's even tangential to sex. And I think that's why adult content in games is so reviled, at least here in the US. Now, this used to be the case with violence, too. Years ago, you couldn't get anything more than cartoon violence past the film censors, though obviously that changed with time. Gaming had its own culture war in regards to violence. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, Jack Thompson led a campaign to censor and ban violent video games and to oversimplify his entire position. He claimed that violent video games damage the social fabric and corrupt the minds of the youth, making them more susceptible to committing violence in the real world. Now, long story short, Jack Thompson lost that war, and pretty convincingly, I might add. I'm pretty sure that this decisive victory for free expression was one of the factors that ultimately led to violence becoming more accepted as an aspect of gaming. Of course, I'm not claiming it's the only factor, or even necessarily the biggest, but I do think it's significant that we haven't really had that same level of culture war when it comes to sexuality. Of course, nowadays we do have a small detachment of feminism that equates female sexuality with the objectification of women, and then uses a broad brush to paint it all as misogynistic. Now, I'm not going to get too into this topic. I have a strict no-politics policy on this channel for a reason, but this group that lobbies the public against sexuality doesn't have the impact that Jack Thompson and his ilk had in the past. 
Quite frankly, most developers understand that these people weren't going to support their products in the first place, so there's no point in appeasing them. Furthermore, the general public, and in particular the gaming community, now more or less ignores them since it became public knowledge that many of their assertions are based on nothing but their own opinions. Additionally, some of the more vocal proponents of this ideology don't always act in good faith, which makes people less likely to want to engage with them. Because this particular cultural skirmish, I refuse to call it a culture war, never really picked up and is basically just fizzling out, there was never a decisive victory for the sexuality is okay side. But don't get me wrong, you'll never catch me wishing that censorious people had more influence. And I do think that the average person is becoming more accepting of sexuality as time goes on. Sexual themes are more and more common in film and TV. Nudity isn't even that rare in R-rated films anymore, and I do think that gaming will follow suit. Look, when it comes to violence in gaming, there is a visceral pleasure that comes from brutally killing someone in a video game. It feels good, and it can definitely be a healthy outlet for aggression. I'd argue that the same thing can be true with sex scenes in video games. You can get a similar visceral pleasure from putting yourself in the shoes of a video game character who gets to have sex with attractive people. Of course, it's absolutely possible to engage with either or both of these things in an unhealthy manner, but the way I see it, there's no good reason for one to be acceptable while the other is not. I think that sex in games is perfectly fine and should be as accepted as violence in games. Sex is a part of human nature and rejecting it in our media is in a way a denial of reality. Sexuality has always been and always will be a defining factor in how people interact with one another, and I don't believe there's any legitimacy to the idea that games should pretend otherwise. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider leaving a like or a comment. If you want to see more, you're more than welcome to hit that subscribe button. Every bit of interaction really does help to appease the almighty algorithm. Well, with all that being said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.